In this question from a study guide for AP Physics 1, uh, we have a massless tray is placed on an inclined plane with an angle of incline of theta. There is a coefficient of static friction mu s between the inclined plane and the massless tray. The tray is attached to a box of mass m and the pulley system shown below. If the mass can be loaded onto the massless tray, how much mass m has, the, has to be loaded to stop the tray from being pulled by the inclined plane by m or along the inclined plane by the mass m? Um, so when we look at this question, we have to look, um, we have to start with the forces or the uh, free body diagram for the forces acting on each object. Because the um, coefficient of friction between the massless tray and the incline is given, um, it doesn't depend on um, how much mass is going to be placed on the plane. So the coefficient of friction depends only on the two surfaces, the massless tray and the, um, and the incline. Uh, but the mass of um, the mass that we can add into the tray will change the force of friction but coefficient of friction depends only on the material of the tray and material of the um, of the incline so if i do load this tray with some mass i'm gonna say m and that's the one that they ask you so i'm gonna write the forces acting on the um, this mass I have the force of gravity, then I have the normal force perpendicular to the surface, I have the tension force, and I have the static friction force, I'm going to call it Fs. And um, this is under the conditions when the tray is not moving, and that's what they ask us. They ask if uh, the mass can be loaded onto the massless tray, how much mass this mass M, um, the one that we have here, um, has to be loaded to stop the tray from being pulled by the inclined plane. So I'm looking for the equilibrium where the mass is not moving with the tray. And then for the second one, we have um, the tension, and it's the same rope, so it's the ten same tension the force of gravity acting on it, which is mg, and there is no acceleration. So because there is no acceleration, the net force is going to be equal to zero. So I'm going to have the tension minus mg is equal to zero. And that is for the second Newton's law, where you have f net is equal to ma, but because acceleration is equal to zero, uh, both objects are not moving, I have uh, instead of ma equals to zero. So for this first equation, I can write t uh, equals to mg. Then for the second uh, mass, the one that we're looking for, we have to write the equilibrium forces as well. Uh, for the vertical force, I'm going to call this one mg, and here is the angle theta that they give, so this is going to be cosine theta, and another one is mg, and sine theta. So the forces acting vertically on this mass are the normal force, up, minus mg, cosine theta, and the vertical forces cancel each other, so I can set equals to zero, or again, I can say that they're equal to each other, and then horizontally, I have the tension I'm going to choose to the right direction positive, so I'll have the tension minus the static friction force, and minus mg sine is equal to zero, 
because again the mass is not moving so horizontally the forces are also in equilibrium or uh, balanced so instead of again saying equals to zero i'm gonna move the static friction in mg sine theta to the right side of the equation um, so i don't have to rewrite it and i'm gonna have this expression okay so now i have three uh, equations and i know that the normal force times mu so if i have the static friction i have mu of static friction times the normal force and we have what the normal force is equal to so i can rewrite my equations as t is equal to mg and then t is also equal to instead of writing the friction force i'm gonna write mu times n and n is um, the second equation in our system so we have mu of static friction times n which is mg cosine theta and then i have plus mg sine theta now i can set up both t's equal to each other so i will have mg is equal to mu of the static friction coefficient of static friction mg cosine theta plus mg sine theta and they ask you for how much mass so i have to solve for m I'm going to factor out M and solve for M. So I will have M is equal to Mg divided by, and if I take M out from both terms on the right side, then what's left in the parentheses when I divide by those, uh, but that parentheses from both sides, that will get um, I actually can cancel G's. Let's cancel G's before we continue. So I can cancel G from all of them. So um, our expression is going to look a little bit easier. And uh, this way we have the mass is equal to M divided by, I have the coefficient of static friction cosine theta plus sine theta so that would be the expression that they ask us to find for a and now let's look at b for the second part they say how much mass am has to be added until the tray starts sliding down the incline so now if the tray is about to slide down the incline the friction the static friction is going to change its direction and it's going to be in um, this direction because right now the so static friction this way so right now the tree is about to start sliding down to the left and in this case um, our equations uh, let me show you like these equations the one that we had earlier um, they will look differently so now we still have the tension is equal to mg we have the normal force is still equal to mg cosine theta but now our um our direction for the um, friction changed and in order to do f net equals to ma for the horizontal forces on mass lowercase m um, I would have tension in the positive direction. Let's call that one positive direction. Also, friction becomes now in a positive direction. And then minus mg sine theta. But um, because it's not moving yet, it's about to start moving. So there's still no acceleration. So that is still zero. And then I can move my mg sine theta to the other side of the equation. So I will have t is equal to mg sine theta 
minus the friction force but the friction force again involves um, the normal force the, so it's going to be the coefficient of friction times the um, normal force so I will have minus the coefficient of static friction and then for the normal force I have mg cosine theta now I can set up both t's equal to each other the t for the mass m and capital M lowercase m and capital M so I will get mg is equal to mg sine theta minus mu static and mg cosine theta and again as before I can cancel g from all of them and in this case um, the mass so your mass in this case has to be greater um, so in, in under these conditions cannot say it equals to because if it equals to then the mass will never start uh, pulling the other mass to the left so your um, right expression must be greater than your left expression so you will have the mass has to be greater than m and then uh, in the denominator you have sine theta minus mu static and cosine theta so that would be the answer for b and then for the last part of the problem they're asking you to, um, if the coefficient of kinetic friction is given and the angle is 45 degrees what is the acceleration of the masses um, massless tree if the mass in it is four times the mass of the uh, of the block here I have the uh, forces again acting on the masses and then I will have acceleration so acceleration in this case is going to be this way and acceleration is going to be that way and I have to show the force of friction so because the mass is sliding to the left I will have the force of friction is acting this way and in this case that's going to be the kinetic force of friction so again if I rewrite my formulas for um, f net is equal to ma for the mass on the tray and the block then I will have my equations so I will have the normal force is um, going to be cancelled with the vertical force on the mass on the tray so again I can write it equals to mg cosine theta because uh, vertically there is no acceleration uh, horizontally there is acceleration and in this case we will have mg sine theta I'm going to choose the uh, direction of acceleration positive and then minus the tension minus the friction coefficient uh, friction and that is equal to that mass times acceleration and I chose acceleration to be positive direction and for the mass of the block so this was for the mass on the tray for the mass of the block I have the tension minus mg and the force um, and the acceleration is up so that is going to be um, um, m a again uh, for the force of friction I need the normal force which is going to be coefficient of friction times the normal force so I can rewrite my um, equation as mg sine theta I'm going to skip writing the normal force uh, minus the tension force minus the friction force mu, which is mu coefficient of friction kinetic times the normal force which is mg cosine theta and that is equal to ma and then for the bottom one I'm going to solve it for tension so the tension is going to be equal to mg plus ma 
Now I'm gonna take tension and place it instead of the tension in the second, same second or the first equation. So if I plug it in, I'm gonna have mg sine theta minus. So instead of the tension, I have this expression, but because there is the negative, it will change the signs inside of my uh, tension. So I'm going to have negative mg, and I'm going to have negative ma. And then I have minus the coefficient of kinetic friction, mg and cosine theta, and that is equal to ma. And to solve for a, I have to move my terms with a to one side, and I'm going to move them all to the um, to the right side. And I will have mg sine theta minus mg minus mu of kinetic friction mg cosine theta. And on the other side, I'm going to have A, I'm going to factor it out, and I have M plus M. And then in the problem, they said um, they give some uh, terms that we can use. Kinetic friction is 0.3. They had the angle 45 degrees. And they said that the, uh, the mass loaded on the tray is equal to 4 times M. So I can use this for my expression to make it a little bit easier. So in my equation, I'm going to plug those in. So instead of the low case m, I'm going to plug in 4m, and then I have g sine theta, and then minus m g minus mu, and then I have kinetic friction uh, coefficient. Instead of m, I have 4 times m g cosine theta and all of that is equal to a and then i have m plus 4 times m which gives me 5m now all of my terms have an m in them and because all of them have m i can divide all of them by m so i don't even have to keep them that means um that my a acceleration is equal to divide all of the terms by 5 and we will have 4 fifths g sine theta minus 1 fifth g minus 4 fifth coefficient of kinetic friction g and cosine theta. Plugging in the numbers again that they gave us, we have 4 fifths of 10 and then I have sine of 45 degrees minus 2 and minus um, 4 fifths coefficient of static friction, uh, kinetic friction is given which is 0.3 and then I have g and cosine of 45 degrees. And then we have acceleration is equal to 8 sine of 45 degrees minus 2 minus um, 8 times point so 4 times 10 divided by 5 gives me 8 times 0.3, which is 2.4, and cosine of 45 degrees. So acceleration is going to be equal to 1.96 meters per second squared. And that is all that we had in this question uh, from the AP Physics 1 review exam. And I hope it was helpful and uh, it will help you on your AP exam. Thank you for watching.